Crown Prince Akashino of Japan attends an award ceremony in Tokyo. The Prince of Wales opens Ruben House in Peckham. Queen Letizia of Spain visits Cartagena, Colombia. And members of the Royal Family of Jordan attend a charity gala in Amman. All this and much more coming up next on your Royal Daily News. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to my channel. My name is Alexandra, and this is your Royal Daily News for June 13th, 2023. Last evening in Amman, Her Majesty Queen Rania of Jordan, accompanied by their Royal Highnesses Prince Talal bin Muhammad and Princess Gita Al Talal of Jordan, attended the King Hussein Cancer Foundation's 2023 Hope Gala fundraiser. Held under the patronage of Their Majesties King Abdullah II and Queen Rania of Jordan, with His Royal Highness Prince Talal bin Muhammad of Jordan as Special Advisor to His Majesty the King, and Her Royal Highness Princess Gita Al Talal of Jordan as Chairperson of the King Hussein Cancer Foundation and the King Hussein Cancer Center, the purpose of the gala is to support projects that sustain the fight against cancer in Jordan and the region such as the establishment of specialized centers across Jordan under the banner of the King Hussein Cancer Center. These include the upcoming King Abdullah II bin Al Hussein Building in Aqaba and two additional buildings in Amman for pediatric treatment and cancer research. In her speech, Princess Gita Al Talal of Jordan spoke about the King Hussein Foundation and the King Hussein Cancer Center's ongoing efforts to ensure accessible cancer care. Quote, We pledge to continue our fight against cancer recognizing it as an adversary that is both formidable and deceptive, and one we must not tolerate." End quote. In Madrid, His Majesty King Felipe VI of Spain hosted a luncheon in honor of His Majesty King Willem Alexander of the Netherlands' two-day working visit to Spain, as well as on the occasion of the 375th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the kingdoms of the Netherlands and Spain, held at the Real Jardín Botánico. During the luncheon, His Majesty the King gave a speech, stating, quote, I am very pleased to welcome His Majesty the King of the Netherlands, dear Willem Alexander, to Spain for such a special visit, and to do so at the Real Jardín Botánico. Quite an adequate setting for both the theme of your visit and our shared concern for the well-being of our planet's nature and environment. It is also a special occasion as this year marks the 375th anniversary since our kingdoms, Spain and the Netherlands, established diplomatic relations. You are well aware of Spain's affection, respect and admiration for your country, friend and ally, with which we share deep historical ties and maintain very positive relations covering practically all areas economic and commercial, security and defense, culture and industry. This excellent cooperation, which demonstrates our common understanding, interests and aspirations, also extends to the energy sector, which brings us together in a new step of bilateral collaboration, one that places us at the forefront of one of the greatest challenges of our time." End quote. On the early evening of June 12th, Her Majesty Queen Letizia of Spain, accompanied by the Spanish Secretary of State for International Cooperation, Ms. Pilar Cancela, arrived at Rafael Nunez International Airport in Cartagena, Colombia, to begin their three-day cooperation visit to the South American country. The purpose of the visit is to learn about the work of the Agencia Española de Cooperación Internacional para Desarrollo, AECID, is carrying out in the areas of health, governance and gender equality, rural development, and food security. According to the Spanish Royal Court, the AECID is also, quote, aiding Colombia's efforts to implement the agreements of peace focusing on strengthening the social rule of law with special attention to the work with ethnic, indigenous, and the Afro-descendant population, end quote. This morning, Her Majesty the Queen visited the AECID training center in Cartagena. Whilst there, Her Majesty the Queen unveiled a commemorative plaque, as well as participated in a roundtable meeting with the staff of the OCE Colombia and the AECID Training Center staff. Meanwhile, His Majesty King Willem Alexander of the Netherlands began his two-day official visit to, well, I'm pretty sure you guessed it by now, Spain. According to RVD, the theme of the visit is, quote, 
Hydrogen. Hydrogen is an important energy carrier in the energy system of the future. End quote. The day began with a visit to the green hydrogen plant Iberdrola. Whilst there, His Majesty the King was given a tour of the factory and was informed about the, quote, operation of the electrolyzer, which splits water into hydrogen and oxygen, end quote. After the tour, His Majesty the King witnessed a signing of several declarations of intent between several Spanish and Dutch companies, including Iberdrola and Vopac, to name a few. In the late morning, His Majesty the King visited the Spanish National Testing Center for Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Technology. During the visit, His Majesty the King was given a tour of several laboratories and learned about, quote, scientific developments, including small-scale green hydrogen generators, end quote. His Majesty the King also witnessed the signing of intent between the CNH2, Technical University of Delft, and TNO to, quote, intensify their cooperation in the field of hydrogen technologies, end quote. This morning, Her Majesty Queen Maxima of the Netherlands visited the construction site for the new social housing project in Rheinsburg. According to RVD, the visit took place in the, quote, run-up to the day of construction, during which the public can take a look behind the construction fences at more than 150 construction sites throughout the Netherlands, end quote. In Capellen, his Royal Highness Hereditary Grand Duke Guillaume of Luxembourg visited the headquarters of the NATO Support and Acquisition Agency, NSPA. During the visit, the Hereditary Grand Duke learned about the logistical and operational work provided by Luxembourg to NATO allies all over the world. The Hereditary Grand Duke also learned about the collaboration between the NATO agency and Luxembourg in the air, medical, military, cyber, and space fields from the Director General Mrs. Stacy A. Cummings. In Luxembourg City, His Royal Highness Grand Duke Henri of Luxembourg presided over the presentation of the 2023 Digital Inclusion Awards. In January 2023, the Luxembourg Ministry of Digitalization launched a call for projects for the promotion of digital inclusion in the Grand Duchy. The call is part of the strategy for implementing the National Action Plan for Digital Inclusion. Yesterday afternoon, the Grand Duke, accompanied by the Minister of the Economy, Mr. Franz Foyette, attended the inauguration of the Helix Building, the new headquarters of Post Luxembourg. In Monte Carlo, His Serene Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco and Mrs. Charlotte Kazaragi Rassam participated in the second edition of Philo Monaco Week held at the Marché de la Condomine. Organized by the association Les Rencontres Philosophiques de Monaco, founded by Ms. Charlotte Kazaragi Rassam, who is also the president, Mr. Robert Majori and Mr. Raphael Zaguri Orly. Philo Monaco Week aims to bring philosophy to a wider audience through a week-long series of events in various locations throughout Monaco, such as the Hotel Hermitage, the Hotel de Paris, and the Yacht Club de Monaco. According to a press release, each of the events is an opportunity for the public to reflect and debate with philosophers and personalities on a range of issues of universal importance, including ecology, education, healthcare, women, and the art of living. The hub of the events during the week will be the Princess Grace Theater, which will become a verifiable quote-unquote house of philosophy, hosting discussions, roundtables, and philosophy-themed lunches in the theater's cafe. On Thursday evening, there will be an award ceremony. This morning, the Sovereign Prince and Ms. Kazaragi Rasim participated in a discussion held under the theme, Ecology, moderated by well-known Monegasque journalist, Ms. Sandrine Negre. In the afternoon, the Sovereign Prince received letters of credence from newly appointed ambassadors to the Principality of Monaco. The newly appointed ambassadors are from Bangladesh, Mongolia, Canada, and Kazakhstan. In Peckham, 
His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, as patron of Centerpoint, attended the opening of Reuben House, a new development that forms a key part of the organization's independent living program to combat youth homelessness. According to a press release, Centerpoint estimates that approximately 15,000 16 to 24 year olds in London faced homelessness last year, from a total of 129,000 across the United Kingdom. To help address this, Centerpoint's independent living program aims to deliver homes of their own to 300 young people in developments in London and Manchester in the coming years. Doing so will give young people who might otherwise be at risk of homelessness or living in unsafe accommodations the chance to build a better future for themselves. The 33 new flats at Reuben House will allow young people aged between 18 and 24 to live in affordable housing, with rent capped at a third of their take-home pay. The flats contain a kitchen, dining area, bathroom, as well as a living room. The flats contain a kitchen, dining area, and a bathroom, as well as a living room. The development comes complete with solar panels, reducing heating bills to approximately 200 pounds a year. During his visit, the prince met some of those who made the development possible and was given a tour of the site, including seeing one of the flats. He also spent time with the residents, hearing about their experience of moving into Reuben House and how the accommodation will help provide security and stability to them. End quote. Awesome. That's so cool. On Monday, His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh met with Ukrainian soldiers undergoing military training in the United Kingdom as part of Operation Interflex. According to Buckingham Palace, Operation Interflex is a multinational operation that trains new recruits in the skills needed to survive and carry out effective frontline combat. Operation Interflex is run by nine partner forces in addition to the United Kingdom, including Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. During the visit, the Duke, dressed in his Royal Air Force uniform, watched troops engage in movement drills and casualty lessons under the supervision of British instructors. In Fredensborg, Her Majesty Queen Margrethe II of Denmark attended the 2023 Royal Summer Ballet held in the gardens at Fredensborg Slot. In Stockholm, His Majesty King Carl Gustav of Sweden presented His Majesty the King's Medal and Literus et Artibus Medals during a ceremony held at the Conlingo Satet. The King's Medal is awarded to an individual for special merit in society. The Literus et Artibus Medal is awarded to an individual for their outstanding artistic contributions specifically in music, stage production, and literature. In Belgrade, Her Royal Highness Crown Princess Catherine of Serbia, accompanied by board members of the Lifeline Humanitarian Organization of Chicago, attended the opening of the Jovan Jovanic Home for Children. In Tokyo, His Imperial Highness Crown Prince Akishino of Japan presided over the presentation of the 2023 Japan Water Prize held at the National Museum of Emerging Science and Innovation. In Muscat, His Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq al Sayyid of Oman hosted a luncheon in honor of His Highness Sheikh Sayyid bin Zakir al Qasimi, the ruler of Ras al Khaima, on the occasion of his official visit to Oman held at Al Baraka Palace. Earlier, the Sultan and His Highness, along with his delegation, held a meeting in which discussions focused on, quote, relations binding the two countries. They explored various aspects of cooperation aimed at serving the mutual interests of Omani and Emirati people. They also touched on a number of issues of concern to both sides. End quote. Thereafter, another meeting was held in the presence of His Highness Crown Prince Saeed the Azim bin Haytham al Saeed of Oman and His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Sayyid al Qasimi of Ras al Khaimah. And finally, in Doha, his Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad al-Tahani, the Emir of Qatar, 
attended day two of the 32nd Doha International Book Fair held at the Doha Exhibition and Convention Center. In his social media post, the Emir thanked those in charge of the famous book fair as well as the participants making this edition, so far, a success. The Emir also hoped that the book fair and exhibition will, quote, contribute to supporting the cultural movement in Qatar and in the region and develops the efforts of authors, publishers, and readers, end quote. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for joining me this evening. I will be back tomorrow on Wednesday, June 14th with all the latest world news. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful evening and a great day tomorrow. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss a thing. Okay, have a wonderful evening, everyone, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.